What's good, people? Agent Juice reporting for duty. Today's video is going to be about how I love fan fiction and uh, fan arts. So, I guess basically uh, fan work in general. Now, you'll notice that this video is a tad different because I am not showing my pretty face in a fancy location this time. Instead, I thought it would be more appropriate to actually show me doing, you know, artwork. So this is my first speed paint. Um, I'm still trying to get used to the software and the, the process, so bear with me if there's any, you know, weird audio or visual nonsense going on. So, uh, today I'm actually drawing Wuya from Shaolin Showdown. And uh, Wuya is objectively the best waifu of all of animation. And if you disagree, then, uh, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but just understand that it's uh, factually incorrect, and you're just going to have to live with it. Yeah. Why is Wuya best waifu, you ask? Well, uh, beside the fact that she has the key aspects of a good waifu and that, you know, she looks good and she's good at what she does, she has something that I have rarely seen in a villain. And that is honesty. Yeah, she actually, you know, is good on her word. There's the, you know, I'm going to try to describe this for people who've never seen the show. But Wuya is the villain of the show Shaolin Showdown. And there is an episode where one of the good guys betrays his team because of reasons and joins Wuya. And so Wuya says, if you do my bidding, then I will reward you handsomely. And normally, this is the part where, you know, the, the villain dupes the, the hero and goes, ha, 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 I lied, ha, 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 and all that crap. But not Wuya. She actually delivers on all of her promises. And even actually takes the time to, you know, get chummy with, with the character and actually, you know, be friends with the character. And... It's actually, the char the character's name is Raymundo. That's the betrayer. R Raymundo actually betrays her by getting cold feet and rejoining the heroes. So if anything, she got betrayed. So yeah, she's actually honest. So that's what makes her best waifu. All right, all right, enough of the uh, tangent. So, uh, fan work. Now, the reason why I like, I love fan work is because... It is a really good way to hone your craft. I really don't buy into the notion, and I never really have, that, that fan fan fiction and fan art is bad. Like, they, they get a bad rap. Recently, they, uh, more fan fiction gets a bad rap. And it, recently, it's, it's kind of improved. But, you know, I've always heard, like, oh, you know, when people write fan fiction, they're losers, they're weebs. You know, it's a waste of time. Real, real creators make original stuff. It's like, yeah, they do. But you have to understand that fan work is a great way of practicing. You know, practicing your, your craft. Not only is it a good way to hone your craft, but it's also a good way to kind of get into the headspace of wherever the creator was whenever, whenever they were making whatever they were making. Um, and finally, fan work is a really great way to understand what you're borrowing from and what you're integrating into your own work. Because there is a quote about how good artists borrow and great artists steal. And if you steal from one source, you're a hack. But if you steal from multiple sources, you're a genius. So, uh, that being said, fan fiction and fan arts, I think, have different functions in how they treat craft honing headspace and integration. I'm going to start with fan fiction, even though I'm making artwork, you know, bear with me. Fan fiction, I think, is more headspace over the honing of the craft, or really the honing of the technicality of writing. Uh, what I mean by headspace is that fan fiction is a really great way of understanding a universe that has already been pre-established. Whenever you make your you know, your cool Harry Potter OC, who is the, the, the descendant of Slytherin and has her own unique wand that also has the phoenix feather that Harry Potter has. W what you're doing 
is that you are thinking about the universe of Harry Potter and and if you're a good writer, you know, bad writers, of course, just pell-mell and just go crazy without regarding the rules. But if you're a good writer, you think about the rules of Harry Potter and think, okay, uh, what do I know about this universe? How does magic work? How do I integrate it? You're thinking within J.K. Rowling's headspace because she, I w- am willing to bet money that she really kind of thought out her rules or at least constructed them so that she could be consistent with them. So in a way it teaches you how to be consistent within your own story because when you make your own stuff and you make up crazy fantasy land, you know, worlds, you're going to have to keep track of this stuff in order to make a coherent story. So it's a good way of teaching you that it does. You know, I said that it's headspace over craft, but craft is a, a part of it because you're learning how to write a story, you know, especially if you post it for people to see and, and judge uh, cruelly. You know, you're learning what the, the marketplace likes and dislikes in your writing. So it's a good way of kind of trial by combat, you know, find out if you can write to at least be entertaining. So <clears throat> I think there's more of a philosophical way of going about fan fiction. As far as fan art, I think this is where technicality is much more important. Because, you know, headspace is okay. I mean, it's a good way of, like, figuring out the character design and drawing on model and whatnot. But I think in this case, the headspace doesn't really matter as much as your technicality, the way you can actually draw. And obviously... You know, this is not to say that only draw from other people's drawings because, you know, you need to use real life references, you know, go to anatomy drawings and and draw still life and all that stuff. But I think when you're drawing, particularly if you're going to be drawing on model, a lot of these animation studios really want their animators to be able to adapt their style and be as on model as possible. It's a very valuable skill set. And this is not coming from me because I'm, I'm not a, you know, I co- I'm coming clean here. I'm not a, uh, on a big show right now. I'm not even on any show. The only thing I've ever really done is an internship. But professionals have told me this. And these are good professionals. And I'm hoping they're not lying to me because I'm kind of, you know, wanting to take this advice myself. In that, you know, being on model is a great technique to have because it makes you versatile, right? And you want to be versatile. You want to be adaptable especially in the creative business. Well, really any business, but especially creative, you know, because trends come and go. Yeah. Anyway, um, in the headspace part of the fan art, I honestly believe that drawing fan art is a really good way of kind of figuring out what something looks like if you want to integrate it yourself. For example, I mean, let's say you want to make a really cool story or, or make a really cool OC in a, in like a, oh, what's a good one? What's something that uses a lot of armor and like something really hyper-produced? Like Bleach, maybe? Or Digimon? <laughs> Digimon? Anyway, imagine, if you will, an OC that has a really cool look. Maybe they wear ornate armor, or they have a cool sword, maybe a, a goofy-looking keyblade, and you're not really sure how to kind of you know, contemplate it and put it on paper. Fan art can kind of give you almost the muscle memory to be able to accomplish that. Because you can look up a, a really crazy designed creature like, you know, Machine Dramon from Digimon. And, you know, it's a very complex, you know, creature to draw if you're not a good artist. But you can kind of guesstimate it and at least look at it and think, like, oh, wow, that's a really interesting integration of these giant cannons on his shoulder. I would love to create a monster with giant cannons on its shoulder. And it kind of gives you inspiration to kind of, like, pull from here and there. Because remember, the geniuses steal from everything. And you kind of assemble it. And fan fiction, of course, is the same way. You can write these stories, and then once you've written them, you get ideas of like, oh, wow, that's how they resolved that plot conflict. Oh, wow, that's how they thought of that thing. You know, and you can tie all this together. And you can take it because you've honed your craft, you, you've practiced the headspace, and now you're integrating it in your own creativity. So please, definitely indulge in fan work. It's fun. 
You know, that's probably the most important part. It's fun. I like drawing Wuya. She's she's good looking. And the green glowy thing she does is really cool. And awesome and she's best boss. I mean, come on. Again, honesty. <laughs> Alright, enough of that. So um I hope you guys like the speed paint. I'd like to do a little more of them. Hopefully I can refine it, you know, make them a little cleaner and better -er and all that stuff. So you guys know what to do. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, once again, I'll provide the intro video link to this Teespring so you guys get yourself a pretty tea, support the cause, yada yada, holidays are coming up, all that good stuff. And until next time, deuces.